All I know is that I can't play the piano because I'm not musically inclined. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. Another Blumhouse foray on Amazon. This is the fourth and final movie in October. There will be another batch of films later on, uh, but this has been Welcome to Blumhouse. All of the other reviews are on this channel right now. This is Nocturne. Nocturne? It's Nocturne. We're going to talk about it. I need your comments down below. If you like these reviews, these horror-centric reviews, if you're a fan of the genre, leave this bit a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. Okay. So, an incredibly gifted pianist makes a bargain to overtake her older sister at a prestigious institution for classical musicians. Think Suspiria. Think Black Swan, except this time we're applying it to someone who wants to be the best piano player, or at least wants to be better than her sister. That's how the film progresses. She is a very jealous person because her sister has always gotten opportunities. Now, whether those opportunities have been fair or not, um, she believes that she is the best, she is the most talented, and all of a sudden, she runs into this journal, this strange series of pieces of paper with these weird symbols and some strange demonic things and she starts to see stuff and uh, she believes that once she lets this demonic entity in she doesn't really know that at the time but once she lets it in and accepts that's what she is going to be um, then she becomes the best of the best. She becomes an incredible piano player. Now, whether Sidney Sweeney was playing the piano or not during this film, I don't know. Uh, she was, in my opinion, good. Now, I have a feeling, um, mostly because I've seen some people on Letterboxd say, I just didn't really like her performance, but Sidney Sweeney is a very particular kind of actor. She always gives this reserved and subtle performance. She has a specific style that I think works for certain characters. Um, I've really loved her in what I've seen so far, and I liked her a lot in this movie. I thought she was good. Some of the cast here is not very good, and the story as a whole, I believe, focuses a bit too much on the teen aspect. We, we get ourselves into a couple of romances here. Maybe we're not as focused on the horror element of this film as I wanted us to be um, because the movie gets to a point in the second act where we're really just kind of spending time on the guy that she's had a thing for. We go to a party. There's a relationship spawning with someone else. We get a really awkward moment in the third act. I'm just like, oh, oh, she did that. Uh, but it takes away from what I thought was really interesting, and that is, um, uh, these are the vibes that we get with a movie like Suspiria, and um, while I wasn't like a massive fan of the remake, I really like the idea of someone who is willing to put it all on the table, do anything it takes to be really good at something. Uh, this is something I'm sure we have in real life. I'm going to be the best, doesn't matter what I have to do, and that is the route we see her taking. Now, I would have liked more of an explanation of this journal, of this book, and kind of where it spawned from. We start to get answers about halfway through, but there really wasn't anything there that made me satisfied by the time we got to the end of the movie. And the ending itself of this film is somewhat open-ended. I believe everyone's going to have their own translation of it, and um, with a spoiler tag, I would love for you guys to leave those comments. What did you think about the ending? Uh, how did it sit with you after it was over? Because that's something I'm still kind of up in the air about. Uh, but I did. I liked the journey. I, I really liked Sydney Sweeney here. I thought she uh, crushed it in this role. It's full of mystery and intrigue and some interesting imagery every time she looks up at the light. Did you see the light? Uh, things kind of uh, predicting where her path is going to go. But there's such a mystery there, uh, one that they don't necessarily tackle, and some unanswered questions, and uh, just the fact that the movie kind of veers off maybe in a direction halfway through that I wasn't really thrilled with, but it does come back by the time we get to the end, but there's a fascination with a movie like this that I often have, something like A, a Black Swan, um, where we see very similar crazy imagery and just a style that we don't often see with the film, and one that I expect from Blumhouse. The, the movie I reviewed earlier today, Evil Eye, didn't have that style. I, I didn't think Evil Eye measured up to my anticipation. 
this film at least went for it. Whether it was a swing and a miss for some, uh, whether they slightly nailed it for others, I think it was okay enough, uh, and it's definitely one of the better entries out of the four. So in terms of a score for Nocturne, I'm going to go a 60, uh, 62%. It's a familiar score. We've seen it many times this year, um, but I can't quite get it closer to that seven mark just because of all of the um, elements that didn't uh, didn't work for me. But again, some really good things. I, I thought the direction was good. The movie has a nice look to it, and it's interesting enough. So overall, I think this Blumhouse series on Netflix, uh, you know, I, I expected a bit better in terms of the range of movies and in terms of the horror i thought it would be scarier as a whole um but this is one nocturne that did do something and maybe that something will work can you play the piano that's my question appreciate you guys for watching big time stay tuned uh, more vids to come i promised an oscar video but so many videos that i wasn't expecting came out today that's going to be pushed to tomorrow along with my dc animated tier list which will be later on this week lots of reviews lots of vids i'll see you guys soon